Okay, so let's do 13.8. So recall from single variable calculus, so from 150. Single variable calc that a function f has a relative max or min at x equals c if the derivative at c is zero or undefined. So we call x equals c a critical number. So examples would be uh, that would be an example of, say, here's your C. Here the F prime is zero. Would be zero in this case. Or it could be a situation like this. So F prime of C in this case would be undefined. Okay, so today we're going to extend this idea. So today we extend this idea, or extend the notion of a critical number. So we're going to make a definition. So the point x0, y0 is a critical point of fxy, so z equals fxy. If one of these two conditions are satisfied, so the first condition is uh, the partial derivative respect to x at x0, y0 is 0, and the partial derivative respect to y at x0, y0 is 0. Or, second uh, condition would be the, one of the partial derivatives does not exist. So this guy, or fy of x0, y0 does not exist. Okay, that's how we're going to extend the idea of critical number. Uh, so let's keep going. Okay, so no, uh, note now that if f uh, partial derivative with respect to x and x zero is zero. And fy x0, y0 is 0, then the gradient from last time was well, going to be uh, f x i f y j, so it's going to be 0i plus 0j. This implies. This implies that the directional derivative from last time at x0, y0, we, we proved that was equal to the gradient dotted with the direction you're coming into uh, x0, y0. Well, that would have to be 0. So hence, every directional derivative
at x0, y0 must be 0. So I'm going to draw a picture so you can kind of see it in a second here. So this implies then this implies the uh, function has a horizontal tangent plane tangent plane at f x zero y zero. So if you recall from the, the math one fifty, if you had a, a function that has a say a relative min here, the tangent line, the sum of tangent line would be zero, so it'd be a horizontal tangent line. So this is just generalizing that to another dimension. So let's take a look at the picture. Okay, so here's a picture of a surface. Here's my surface up here. It looks like we've got a max here. So this is the xy plane down over here. So we could say, let's call this point in the xy plane x0, y0. It's going to correspond to when I apply f to it, maybe it's going to come up to here. It's going to be by f x0, y0. So uh, this should be, this is a max here, a relative a max, so if I draw, draw, uh, drew in the tangent plane, so here. So this would be my uh, tangent plane up here. So you can notice the tangent plane uh, is parallel to the x-axis. So that's the idea. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so uh, critical points may, may not always yield relative extrema. That means either relative max or min. So we define a saddle point uh, as a critical point which is not a relative max or min. So let's recall a few things here from uh, math 150. So recall, uh, you had, say, something like, something like that, that would be called concave up, concave up, uh, and this would imply then the second derivative, oops, second derivative is greater than zero, and then also we have concave down, so concave down, And that would be the second derivative would be less than zero. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a picture of something that uh, has a saddle point. So let's keep going here. Okay, so here's a picture. So in this picture, we've drawn something like this uh, before in, in class. Uh, but I claim that this guy here will be a saddle point. Okay, you can see along this parabola here, you'll have a, a 150, uh, derivative would be zero there, and also along this parabola, the math 150 derivative would be zero there. So maybe the partial derivatives of this function, so you'd have then the partial derivative with respect to x would be zero, partial derivative with respect to y would be zero. So it satisfied the conditions for a critical point, but I claim it's not a relative max or min, well, and so it's right here. It's not the lowest because I can go lower. That guy right there is lower. And it's not the highest because that one over there would be higher. Okay, so this would be neither a relative max or a relative min. But yet the partial derivative with respect to x would be zero and respect to y would be zero. So, so I want you to note that the saddle point has a 
concave up part and a concave down part. So I made this note here. Note. Saddle point. Has a concave up and concave down part. That's important. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, so we're going to make a definition. So definition. I will find D of point AB equal to second derivative with respect to X at AB times second derivative with respect to Y at AB minus the mixed second derivative, the whole thing squared. Okay, so we're going to uh, now make a theorem. So a theorem. I'm not going to prove this, but we'll call it, say, the second derivative and test. So one, sorry, let me just say here, suppose uh, the uh, first derivative respect to x at a, b is zero. So pretty much it's a critical point. And f, y at a, b, well, they're both zero. And uh, so the theorem states if D of A, B is greater than zero, and F double X at A, B is greater than zero. Well, uh, this is saying the second derivative is uh, positive, so it looks like this side. So you can apply a guess then what the answer should be, while well, it would be a relative uh, min in this case. Uh, then F has a relative min at AB, F of AB, say, to if D of AB is greater than zero and second derivative respect to X this time is negative, so therefore second derivative being negative would imply some sort of picture like that. Uh, then F has relative max at F of AB. Get two more conditions. If D of AB is less than zero, then set a point. And four, if D is zero, test is inconclusive. Inconclusive. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to make an observation here. So note here that to have a relative min or max, the D guy has to be positive. And here's my D up here. So uh, let's see the conditions. And, and pretty much if D is negative, then it's a saddle point. So let's uh, just erase this up here for a second. So note. D A B greater than zero. 
implies. So this last part's negative. So for this thing to be greater than zero implies these have to have the same sign. They have to have the uh, same signs. So they, they have to be both negative or both positive. They can't be a mixture of signs. Otherwise, the D would be negative because this would be negative and that's negative. So they have to have the same signs. So that means they have to have the same uh, concavities. So I need to have the same concavities. Concavities. Either, either both concave up or both concave down. So you can see that rules out the uh, saddle point. Let me just, that rules out the saddle point. Let me just look at the picture again. You can see here that the D of AB for this guy would be negative because you have concave up here and concave down here. Okay.